Well, good morning, Living Hope Church. I'm so glad you're here with us today. It's bright, it's sunny, it's gorgeous out. And for those that are joining us online, we're so glad that you're with us online as well today. Such a blessing to see everybody's smiling faces as we're actually having sunshine and nice weather. Hopefully not short-lived, but it's all good. And it's Super Bowl Sunday, and it's Vasilopa Day, so I'm super glad and blessed that you are all here. I've got a few announcements, but I want to start with some ladies that were joining me this weekend from church at our Sisterhood Leadership Retreat. Bridge the Gap Ministries is our women's ministry group under the Assemblies of God for the state of Minnesota. And every year they put on a leadership retreat in the spring and a fall retreat um, called Thrive. And this one's a little bit more intimate, but we all were up at Lake Geneva Christian Center in Alexandria and had such a blast. There was a total of eight of us ladies. You can see our picture up on the screen. It was such a good time. We had great speakers. Of Allie Worthington was there. Um, great worship and just an awesome time together. And I asked each lady to kind of come up and just kind of You've heard me talk about how I think this is super important to go to these things. But I wanted each one of them to give just a quick little snippet of what they really enjoyed, why this was important to them, to really encourage more ladies to go. I'd love to get a bus. I mean, I'm serious. I'd love every woman in this place to go with us next year. So, Ginger. Yeah, it was such a good time. Just so refreshing and awesome worship. Uh, one of the things, I, I'll just share one little nugget that I got out of um, from the speaker. And one of the things that our speaker, Allie Worthington, had said was when you are thinking about uh, making decisions or what's wise um, to think about, is this... Um, are you pleasing the Lord by doing it, or are you making the enemy happy by not doing it? And it was just such a, a little click, like a good perspective, even just something so simple, um, but just a good little nugget to live by. Um, <clears throat> well, it was the first time I've ever gone to anything like this, and I, it was so fun. Um, and I think what I took away from it was a lot of encouragement. There's a lot of joy, laughing. You could just, like, feel God working. So I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> um, Allie was absolutely a phenomenal speaker. Um, I just took away from it that, like, one of the things she had us think about was, like, what do you want to stop doing? And I was just like, huh. And I had a couple things rattling through my head, and I'm just going to stop, like, worrying what other people think, and I'm just going to do what makes me and my husband, Michael, happy and who cares what other people think um, we had a great time the worship was very powerful and um, the workshops were really phenomenal um, the workshops that I attended were nothing what I thought they were going to be and um, which turned out to be really awesome and um, we got to pray with people encourage some of them and the presence of the Lord came in and just touch that person's life and so you get to use your gifts while you're there and you get to minister you know to those and you get to be ministered to you know also and so not by not going you're missing out on what God has for you how he can use you and you don't stay home and sit on your gifts and so it's very important that you <laughs> be able to use your gifts and your talents that God has blessed each and every one of us with through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what's really important. And we got to know each other and learn so much new things. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Not all of them really wanted to be up here. And I know there was somebody that was with us and is not here today, but she had a great time too. And her biggest comment that she made in the car on the way back as we were kind of recapping was how it was so important to hear somebody else speaking to other leaders about when you think you're stepping out in something God's calling you to do and you meet resistance. And so many times people are taught that that means that maybe that door is closing, you're really not supposed to be doing that. And really, that's not usually the case. The enemy wants to stop you. So the enemy is going to try to close those doors, and you just need to put your Jesus boots on and kick it back open. And I think that that's such an important lesson for people to hear, especially from another leader's mouth to a large group of other leaders, because it, it, it can be very discouraging and hard when you feel like 
things aren't going the way they're supposed to be in your head because you're doing something God's calling you out to do. So that was her little nugget. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'd love to see more ladies go next year. Tickets right now are the cheapest they're going to be until February 17th. So if you're interested in going next year, please talk to me. I'll show you how to register for it and how we're going to do it to keep it as cheap as possible. But it is so worth it. Save that date. Mark it on your calendar. In that same breath, I just want to talk about that there is other retreats that are happening and coming up too, and I'll give more information on those, not necessarily today, but coming up because, like I said, there's always so much happening, and I'd love to see us just get super involved and closer to each other. Um, okay, and I'm not even shy that I have my notes written on the back of a piece of cardboard from a cracker box because I forgot my notebook at home. So it's all good. We're not perfect, right? It doesn't matter. Um, okay, today after service, we have our community meal. Please, we'd love everybody to come. Even if you forgot about it or didn't bring anything, that's okay. There's going to be more than enough food. So please come and stay with us, fellowship with us. Um, I want to jump to men's advances coming up. So you just heard all of us ladies. And there's a men's retreat coming up in March. It's March 24th fourth through the 25th at Lake Geneva Christian Center as well and their food is like dynamite you guys I'm like super jealous because they have great food my husband went last year he always had this stigma that you know there's all these crying people and he's like I don't want to have anything to do with that it's not manly that's not what happens at all and I think sometimes if you've never been to a retreat like this you really aren't sure what to expect but it just is a really great time. It's a really great opportunity to really connect with the Lord, get grow deeper, learn. You leave with lots of things you're still processing. It's, it's worth the time together. Plus, getting to know each other more in the church here so we can be stronger together because we got lots of things happening in this world that we're going to need that. Um, Colton Dixon is coming to the Moore High School in April, on April 15th. Tickets are $20. You can purchase them at the Rural Music um, website and this is such an awesome opportunity to see such a great musician at such a cheap price twenty dollars a ticket is nothing nowadays um, and he is a great musician and he's got special guests obviously of jordan saint seer i think that's how you say it and apollo ltd limited um, it's going to be a blast so i'd love to make sure that you know they have more people coming to see this thing than they have space for i think that'd be way cool um, on that same note, I just learned this in the car, and Pastor Steve may be getting mad at me because I'm going really long, but that's okay. Um, I heard in the car today that there's this whole thing happening during the Super Bowl this year with commercials. How many watch the Super Bowl? How many watch it for the game? And how many watch it for the commercials? Right? Okay, so I really don't watch it for the game. I could care less about the game. Food, commercials, I'm there. This year, the commercials, they're doing this entire push called He Gets Us. A bunch of the commercials are all going to be about Jesus Christ. And this just kind of blew me away because the one that actually does all this organizing for the commercials during the Super Bowl, because this is like prime spots because so many people are watching. You are paying buku bucks for this. So it's a multi-million dollar push that they have put together to do commercials for Christ. And their goal with this is to really unify people and to get rid of this stigma and quote-unquote agenda that they seem to think that Christians are pushing so people can understand who Christ really is. We're not stuffy. He's not mean. But to show this unbelievable love and forgiveness that he has. And I think this is so awesome. It just kind of makes me melt inside a little bit because this is huge to be happening during the Super Bowl because so many people are watching. So if you don't watch, maybe just watch for the commercials because it's going to be awesome. But I think that it's important when we are looking at all these events coming up. There's a reason for this. Revival is coming, amen? Um, and it's going to come in a big way. So with that, we'll throw up the offering slide, and I'll pray as we get ready to head into worship. Nope, Pastor Steve's going to come up first. But the slide for the... Offering is up on there. Um, our website, livinghopechurchmora.com. You can go to the app, Living Hope Church Mora. You can download it. It is free. You can text Mora Hope to the number on the screen. You can send it snail mail. Or we have offering boxes outside of the doors of the sanctuary as well. Um, and with that, I'll do a little prayer and then Pastor Steve. 
Lord, thank you for this opportunity for us to be here together today um, to worship you. I pray that as we're in worship, that you're opening our hearts today to hear your message, to touch on us, to hear what you are wanting to translate to us today, that you wash off all the junk of the world, and as we step forward today outside of this building and head into the next week, that you're with us, Lord, guiding our steps. I pray that as our hearts open today during worship, that you just overflow everyone's heart with your love and grace, Lord, healing of sickness, because I believe there's a whole lot of that to be broken, blessing finances, blessing their hearts, but just overflowing so much that as they leave here, they're blessing others that they encounter, Lord. Your name, amen. Caleb, if you could come up. We're doing something a little different. It's, it's kind of by necessity this morning because my brother Caleb and Melody are battling some throat stuff, so their voice is not the best. But I just asked Caleb if he would just play some instrumental. And we're going to press into some prayer. So it's a little bit different than what we're used to. We do, he has some songs that he's going to be playing instrumental to, and we do got words on the screen. But while we're doing that, can we put up the prayer slide for a second? And I know people online will be able to see it too. It's, uh, it's the slide before my sermon slide there. It's like a prayer. Here we go. Just want to put this on the screen because, you know, worship... It, when we connect with God, there's a lot of ways to do that, you know. And first of all, in the Bible, remember um, in Second Samuel or First Samuel, um, David was serving in King Saul's court, and we know that Saul, at that point of his life, he he's, he drifted from the Lord. He started, you know, he kind of drifted from God, started worshiping false idols. He got into some idolatry, but he still was king over Israel. And because of what King Saul opened up in his heart and in his life, he was tormented by demonic spirits. And the only thing that would bring comfort to David or Saul was when David would play like my Caleb's doing right now. David was a harpist and that was a kind of a guitar back in their day. And, and just by David strumming his instrument was able to bring peace to King Saul's mind. Whatever was tormenting his mind, whatever was bringing confusion and whatever was causing pain in his mind and in his heart and soul was alleviated by just David playing the instrument. So I just thought, man, this is a moment where we get to press into him like that as a church. And we could also fast forward to a time when Elisha you know, just after he took over for Elijah, Elisha was just doing something, but word got sent to him that he needed to go prophesy, or this king, and this, this one, I forgot the name of the king, but it was in Kings, where this king was kind of wicked and evil, and he was kind of doing some things that were bad in the sight of the Lord, and, and this king said, send Send for the prophet to come to me, to talk to me, to encourage me. And when the letter got sent to Elijah, he got mad. He's like, I don't want to go talk to this guy. I don't want to go who you think you are, that I could just come. And, but yet, because of what the king, because of a relationship, the king, I think it was the king's uh, father. It was the king that Elisha served, and he passed on, so the son's taken over the throne. He's wicked. So basically, Elisha says, you know what? I will go to you, not because of you, but because of your dad. And, and Elisha shows up, and he's mad. Like, he's upset. He really doesn't want to be there. He, he really doesn't want to, to give the word of the Lord to this king. But Elisha did this. This is what he says. Bring me a minstrel. Bring me someone who can play an instrument. And it's like, because Elisha knew that in order for him to minister effectively, in order for him to hear what God wanted to give to him so that he could give to this king, required this. It, it required some worship. It required instrumentation. It, it Because, you know, the Bible says we open up the heavens and God comes down. And, and we know there's a prince and power of the air. And so music shifts the atmosphere. You know, we could see that in Psalms 8 too, that 
worship and praise silences the foe and the avenger. And, and we assume that it's just, you know, the, praise, the praises that come from our mouth does that. The thanksgiving that comes from our mouth does that. But also the instrumentation of an instrument can, can shift an atmosphere too. And so that's what we're doing this morning because Caleb can't sing, and, but he can still play his instrument. We're just going to let the music, just the presence of God just hit you that way. And there's, there's a slide up here that while Caleb is playing, and for those of you, I believe online, we have a way for you to see that. Here's some things that you can do while Caleb is playing. It, you, you, there's Psalms 51. You can get clean. You know, maybe, maybe you're carrying something in your heart today. Well, how do you get clean and how do you get right before God? Well, Psalms 51 and Psalms 24 gives you a pathway of how you can meditate on getting clean before God. What about protection? You know, maybe some of you today are, maybe you feel like you're under an attack. You know, maybe you feel like you're under warfare. Maybe you have a family member that's under warfare today. Maybe you feel like you're coming under some spiritual warfare. Well, take out Psalms 91, and, and as Caleb is playing, read that. Pray that over, over your life. Pray that over a family member and, and declare God's protection. You know, you need healing today. Look at Malachi chapter 4 too. He's the son of righteousness that rises up with healing in its wings, that there, there is healing in God's presence, church. And so if you need healing today, this is a moment for you to say, Lord, I want to touch, and I need a fresh touch, you know, from you today. Lord, touch my life, touch my body, and touch this area of my life, and you can call on God. If you need refreshing today, Acts 3.19, and we could get refreshing, you know, as we repent, and as we're coming before the Lord, times of refreshing are for the believer, and ask God for refreshing today. You know, here's another, there's some steps to get cleansed. You know, when we want to be cleansed, you know, God wants to work on the inside of our heart today. Or, you know, our body is a temple where the Holy Spirit lives. So maybe there's, maybe there's things within you and, and you can meditate on the fruits of the Spirit. You know, there's, there's the love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. And, you know, you can ask God, say, Lord, take out what needs to be taken out of me. And May the, may the fruits of the Spirit be placed inside. I mean, you know, ask for the power of God, you know. The same power that raised Christ from the dead wants to dwell inside of you, church. Do you believe that? That the very power that lifted Jesus up wants to live and dwell in you. And, and finally, when we're in an atmosphere like this, it's an opportunity for God to speak to you. You know, this is where, this is journaling. This is where you... This is where you get quiet before the Lord and he, he speaks to our hearts. He speaks to our minds with impressions. And, you know, as we meditate on the word, even reading the scriptures that I've posted here, as you're reading through, it's like the Holy Spirit can begin to speak to you and begin to show you some things. And, and, it, and, and an atmosphere like this opens the door for the, for, for the prophetic to be released. That's, that's the encouragement of God to come over you. That's, that's where God wants to speak to your heart. So, so this is how we're going to worship today just because... My brother here can't, can't lead us in song, but he can lead us in song this way. So take a, take a couple minutes, and for those online, you can see this very slide that our church is seeing this morning. And just take a moment just to soak and press into the instrumentation. And then as we do that, we're going we're gonna to kind of take a time to pray and do a couple things this morning. But let's just, Father, we just come into your presence. Father, just by the very instrumentation of the instrument if you could bring deliverance to King Saul you could bring deliverance to us father if you could if you could use a minstrel or a musician to play an instrument to create an atmosphere so Elisha can bring the word of the Lord Lord what can you do for us as we're taking time in your presence Lord as as Caleb is, is prophetically as he's playing his instrument Lord you could open up the word of God to us. You could create an atmosphere where we could be healed this morning. We could be cleansed. We could be encouraged. We, we could feel a sense of your presence and protection over our lives. Father, your word says to be still and know that you're God this morning. Father, as we sit still in your presence, as we just even sit quietly listening, Lord, you could remind us of your promises. You could reveal some things we need to pray about. You could show us some people that we need to forgive, all because we're just taking time to sit in your presence this morning. 
in Jesus' name. As Caleb plays, let me remind you this. Spending time with God is a lot like hunting. You know why? Because, you know, a lot of guys that are hunters will understand this, even ladies too that like to hunt. See, when you, when you get to the woods and when you get to that deer stand, you have to be quiet. You see, it's only in quietness do the creatures start to come out. I learned this discipline when my first wife passed away years ago. When I went through a season of, of grief and sorrow and suffering, a mentor of mine said, Steve, you, you have to get quiet before God because getting quiet before God allows the creatures that you've been suppressing down to come out. You need, you need, to, you need to get in God's presence and let, let some of those troubling things emerge from your soul because those are the things God wants to touch and heal and set you free from. And he says, it's in your busyness that you avoid it and you start pushing those things down. But in an atmosphere like this, let whatever, whatever is turning around in your heart today, let that stuff come to the surface. And, and if, you, if you feel a stirring or if you feel like some agitation in your spirit, don't avoid it. Say, Holy Spirit, come. I mean, that's the greatest prayer you could pray right now is Holy Spirit, come. And guess what? He comes. <laughs> He brings comfort. He brings healing. He brings revelation. He may bring some conviction. And whatever gets stirred up, just say, Lord, here's my offering. Lord, I give you this. I, I give you this pain or I give you this unforgiveness. Lord, I, I give you this situation. So whatever, whatever you feel is turning around in your heart, don't, don't avoid that. Take a moment to lean in because it's only in quietness that these little creatures start to kind of they want to come out, and, and God wants it to come up and out. So, Father, as we sit in your presence, deal with the things within our heart right now. Deal with those annoyances. Lord, your word says in Song of Solomon, catch for us those little foxes that spoil the vineyards. Father, remove those little things that are eating away our fruit this morning, that are, that are kind of etching at our heart or things that are kind of annoyances or irritations in our life. Father, let this atmosphere begin to give us a safe place to deal with these things in Jesus' name. So I'm just going to let Caleb play for a little bit. Again, for those online, you have the same slide that our church has. and We're just going to encounter God in quietness and in his presence this morning.
Father. We come in your presence. Your word says we could confess our sin and you're able and just to forgive our sin today. You're able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, cleanse us. Father, you've, through your shed blood of your son and his death, his burial, his resurrection, your word says the, the curtain is torn, which gives us access into your presence. May we walk boldly and confidently before your throne. God, we need you today. Father, we need a fresh touch on our life. Father, I pray healing for those that need healing in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you just break off a spirit of defeat off people today. Father, break off that spirit of defeat that that would hold people back, that, that, would, that would paralyze or even cripple their faith. Father, we ask that that spirit of defeat would just be bound today. We ask that it be broken. We command it to come up and out in the name of Jesus. And Father, replace it with victory. Father, release a spirit of victory. God, release a spirit of victorious faith. Release, release courage and release strength in this season. And so, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we just like we come against any tormenting spirits that would harass people, even at the nighttime. God, those that have a hard time sleeping at night, those that are being robbed of rest, God, we just ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that those spirits of torment would be bound and broken and removed. It says in Psalms 91 that we don't have to fear the terrors of the night nor by day or the pestilence that stalks at night or by day. Father, you give give us protection against the things that come against us during the day and at night. So Father, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that those tormenting spirits that would cause unrest in people's life be up and out in Jesus' name and replace it with a spirit of peace. That nothing would be missing or broken. Your word says that you give rest to the righteous and that that rest is a gift for the righteous, your word says. So Father, release a rest and a peace that would come across not just the body, but the mind and the soul. That, That people would be at rest in their mind and their soul today in the name of Jesus. Just release a peace and a rest over your church. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break a spirit of trauma off of your church. Those that have been through experiences, traumatic things, things they've experienced, seen, or heard, we just ask that a spirit of trauma would be broken off your people today in the name of Jesus. And God, release a spirit of healing. God, your word says you're the son of righteousness that that rises up with healing. Father, release a healing over your church. Rise up over men and women. Rise up over people with healing right now. And may the power of your presence from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, God, may your presence just come. May, may the weight and glory of your presence just come on your people. May, may your presence feel like a blanket on your church today. May it feel like this heavy blanket that's coming on them. And, and, and Lord, when that comes, it just brings total peace that there would be like this peace that passes all understanding that would guard their heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Father, come Holy Spirit. We know you're here. We just welcome you to come. Holy Spirit, just come. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is saying that there's no, there's nothing that you have, there's nothing that you could not do to push him away. He just loves you this morning. Some of you need to know that that God is a Father who loves you. And there's nothing that you can do to push His love away from you. You might think, oh, I've done this or I've done that. And how could could a loving, holy, heavenly Father just love me? Well, He does. And there's nothing that you did that could push His love away from you. Because, you know, every father, even as an earthly father, I, I love my son. And my son gets into trouble, but I love him. And there's nothing that my son can do that that can push my love away from him. And our father's that same way in heaven. You may think, man, I've done this with my life, or I've made this mistake, or I've treated a person, I treated my wife this way, my husband. It doesn't matter. You have a heavenly father that says, you know what? There's nothing you can do that would push his love away from you. And this morning, just receive it. You know, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. And up to that point, he 
did nothing other than just go to get baptized by John the Baptist. And the Bible says the heavens open and the Father, this is what the Father said to his son, who didn't do a miracle yet. He didn't, he didn't take the sins of the world upon himself yet. He was just a child that was raised in Nazareth, who was 30 years old. He had done nothing up to that point other than to say, look, John, I need to be baptized. The Father says, you are my son who I love and I am pleased with. That's what God says of you. That's what the Father says over you. You are my daughter and you are my son whom I love and I am well pleased. You know what? That's what the Father is saying over you today. The same word he spoke over his son Jesus, he speaks over you. He is pleased with you and he loves you. There's nothing that you can do that could push a father's love away. All you need to do is like even the father who is waiting for his son to come home. The Bible says the prodigal son came to his senses and the father was waiting for his son. And, and when he saw his son come home, he, he ran to his son. He loved him. He, he, I mean, the father didn't push his son away when he came home after he spoiled his inheritance and after he had a, had a run with some wild living and some bad choices. The father just ran to his son and loved him. That's how God sees you today. So Father, I pray that that love would manifest. And God, release, release a spirit of forgiveness. All you need to say is, Father, forgive me. And even the prodigal son had a whole speech ready to give his dad, and his dad kind of cut him off and said, my son was lost, but now he's found. That's, that's the love of a father. There's nothing that you can say or do that would push his love away. He loves you so much. So Father, just release that love today. May we feel that love come upon us right now. That, that you love us, that you're pleased with us. That you're a good father. You're a good father. Give us a revelation that you're a good father today. Someone needs to hear that today, that, 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 that the good father loves you. <laughs> Father, as we're here this morning, we ask for revival and awakening for our church, our city, our state, and our nation. Father, we're thankful that you're moving across this nation, and we're thankful that you're moving at Asbury College, God, that, that back in the 70s, you poured out your spirit, and then again, you're pouring your spirit on that place once again. And, and Father, we just know at this time, you're, you're, you're choosing to, to have a holy disruption. Lord, this is a year of holy disruptions. Lord, Prepare us for those disruptions when your presence just wants to invade a moment. And Lord, we make help us to prepare and make room for that. Just come. Lord, just disrupt, just disrupt the, the status quo of our nation right now with your presence. Disrupt us the status quo of our lives or even in the midst as we're talking about steps in the midst of our daily routines may we have room for you to show up God just show up into our lives and show your glory show your holiness and show your power in such a way where we're just we have no choice but to respond and we've been disrupted by love we've been disrupted by your glory we've been disrupted by your presence Father create a holy disruption upon our nation at this time Lord, if you can invade a student body in Kentucky, you can, you can invade our space. You can invade our city. You can invade our nation, God. And, and Lord, we just have to be ready and prepare the space and place for you to move. And Lord, here, just come down right now, Lord, and meet with your people. Forgive us for our sins, Lord. Cleanse us for our disobedience. Cleanse us from the things that we have done. Father, we stand in the gap and forgive our city for things that we have done that, that would turn you away, God. And Lord, we stand in the gap and we repent of that. Father, we stand in the gap for our nation, God. There's things that, that people have done in our nation. And, and Lord, as believers, if we say, Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for allowing such things to happen in our nation where, where things are happening and evil is taking place. God, forgive us for allowing these things to happen. We're asking for your mercy, Lord. We're asking for your grace, God, to come and bring healing to our land. Lord, touch those in places
places of leadership and authority. Father, you, everyone's reachable in your kingdom, God. Whether it's a president, a mayor, or a governor, God, no one, everyone's reachable. We're asking that you touch our leaders. Father, you, you, you showed up to some kings in the Bible, and, and, and there were some that repented and some didn't, but you still showed up, and you still tried to bring a word of encouragement to them. You still tried to display your love for them. You, you tried to show them the blessing of what it would be if they repented, but yet you still showed them the judgment if they didn't. So, Father, we're asking that you show up to leaders, show up to people in places of authority that, that have power, that have ability to make decisions, and Father, show up to them, just like you would send prophets in the Old Testament to reveal to leaders, this is what happens if we repent. This is what happens if you, if you stay the course that you're on. Father, raise up bold, prophetic people in this year, in this season. God, raise up people to bring the word of the Lord. And Father, you're the prophet. So Father, if you're showing up to, to Muslims all over the world, if you're showing up to people all over the world as a man dressed in white, then Father, do that in our nation. Do that for our president. Do that for our governors and mayors and city leaders. God, show up in dreams and visions like you did of old and reveal yourself to them that you did the Apostle Paul on the Damascus Road. Father, you're still reaching people. You still love people and you still can wholly disrupt their lives in such a great way to show them, look, I want to do this in your life instead of you doing that. Father, we know that you've set before us life and death and Father, we're asking today that those that you reveal yourself to would choose life rather than death. So Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Touch touch your people. Father, bring awakening and refreshing to the churches, to the pastors, to the spiritual leaders of our land. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, as a pastor, I stand in the gap and say, forgive, I represent pastors. God, forgive us for for not making room for your spirit enough. Forgive us, God, for not preaching the word bold enough. God, I stand in the gap for all the preachers of America, Lord, that aren't preaching the word and standing on the truth that they should. Father, forgive us, Lord. We know that there's strong rebukes of the shepherds and the pastors in the Old Testament. Father, may we, may myself and others not, not be judged like that. And so, Father, help us, God, to, to stand for righteousness and truth, even though it may it may do persecution of God, but Lord, I know I'm not afraid of that, but I just stand in the gap for my other brothers and sisters that preach the word, those that are compromising, those, those that are afraid, those that are, that are in it for the wrong reasons. God, I ask that you would just bring a cleansing to the ministry across the nation, that you would bring a purity back to the word of the Lord and bring a purity back to the churches. May there be a sense when people walk into the room, their glory is here, your presence is here, God. We want that. We need that, Jesus. Oh, God, you're so good. pray for our city, begin to pray for our state and our nation, just begin to ask God for a fresh touch, and a fresh move of his, of, his, of his Holy Spirit and his glory across your heart this morning. I know this is a different way of, of worshiping than what you're used to, but thanks for pressing in, because this, this, God loves this. <laughs> this is so rich this morning. I know it's a little bit different than what some are used to, but man, God is here this morning. He's ministering. I know he's revealing some things to you today, too. This is what worship is. It's, it's, it's praising God. It's praying. It's listening. It's spending time in his presence. This is how revival comes. This is, this is how transformation comes. This, this, is, this, is what, this is what starts making you all. This is what makes all things new in your life are times like this. Oh, Lord, just release your presence. And set people free today. Set people free, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. Lord, remove doubt. Remove fear. Remove worry. Something I want to share with you that we, we pray every Wednesday night at our church, and what something the Lord's put on my heart, we've been praying through the last few weeks is Goshen. 
that, that this is, we believe that we're coming into like a season where we're going to experience what God's people experienced in Goshen. Now, Goshen is a small little plot of land that, that Joseph got through favor with the Pharaoh when, he, when the Pharaoh was in charge. Joshua, or Joseph was able to get this, this lush, this best piece of land. It was a little piece of land, but it's a prophetic picture of prosperity and blessing in times of famine and in times of persecution. And, and it was Goshen was the place where God's people lived when, when, when uh, Joseph died and when the Pharaoh died and, and then a new Pharaoh came into leadership and then the, that, that's at the end of Genesis. Now we're into Exodus. And, and a wicked Pharaoh started leading and, and putting God's people in oppression, slavery, and bondage. But guess where God's people lived? They lived in this place called Goshen. It was a place where they had no plagues there. Come on, somebody. When the plagues were, were being judged on the Egyptians... The Israelites were being blessed and protected in Goshen. Goshen was a place where God protected his people. It was a place where he multiplied the things that God was doing. And it was a place where God just poured out his spirit. It was a place like when, when the plague of darkness was, was released on, on Egypt, Goshen was the only place that was lit up. Come on, somebody. You know, so we've been praying that. I just released that over you in this season that, that God is going to lead you to Goshen. He's going to lead you to that place. And, and we're all a Goshen. When God sends us somewhere, we establish a Goshen where God has put us. This church, this church is a Goshen for Mora. This is a safe place. This is a refuge. People get healed here. I just got word this week of, of a young lady I prayed with on New Year's Eve, and she sent me the brain scans in an email and says, hey, this one, you know, you prayed for me. Here's the brain scans. She showed me the brain scan before we prayed and then showed me the brain scan after she prayed. She goes, I haven't felt this good in years. And you know what? I'm, she goes, God is healing me. And she goes, I wanted to show you the brain scans to prove it. See, God is touching people. We're getting calls for people that need deliverance and freedom. And see, this is a Goshen. This is a place that God has established as a refuge, a, a place where his glory is here. Some of you are feeling his presence right now. That's why people cry when they come into this house, because his presence is here. This is a Goshen. This is a, this is a place where God wants to do some things in your heart and in your life. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, I pray, may we all experience Goshen in this season. Father, no matter what the world is going through on the outside, your people will always be spared and taken care of on the end. Father, we're all a Goshen. We're all, we're all a group of people as believers, God. When, when, this, when the plagues are being poured out on the nation, we're going to be protected in Goshen. We're going to be provided for. We're going to be taken care of. We're, even though... God's people were oppressed. They were treated unfairly. But they always had Goshen to go back to at the end of the day. They were in Goshen. They were protected. They were taken care of. Even in, even in times of persecution, God, you took care of your people. And Father, we claim that promise for us in this season. We believe, God, that, that when things start happening, God, that we're going to be a Goshen, that, that we're, our home, our family will be a Goshen. And that's where the blood, the blood of Jesus covers the homes in Goshen. Come on, somebody. The blood covers you today, protects you today. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, if you got your Bibles, I just want to take a couple, couple minutes today to go through our series on steps. You know, we're on, we're on part two of steps. Last week we talked about how do you get a... a a new beginning out of, a, out of an impossible situation. Today we're going to talk about part two in our step series. What it is, is this the discipline, it's the disciplines of the faithful. If you got your Bibles, go to Joshua chapter three today. We're going to kind of look at a case study of different Bible characters. And, and this series came during our fasting and prayer. We had 21 days of fasting and prayer. And the Lord just started showing me these, these individuals in the Bible that the steps that they took, and, and you see the, the results that they got. And we looked at David last week when, man, when God even told David, I'm not going to answer your prayer. I mean, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the situation? And God says, you know what, David? 
you could pray, but I'm not going to answer that because of what you did. And, and Dave, but David didn't stop praying. You know, he, he, there's some steps that he took. And, and those steps that he took resulted in, in David and Bathsheba to give birth to a boy by the name of Solomon who God used greatly. See, David knew that he was up against some things. He knew that he got a new beginning out of something impossible. Why? Because there were some simple steps that he took. And today we're going to talk about another guy named Joshua. There's some steps that he and, and God's people took that resulted in some awesome things for their life. And today we're going to talk about footsteps of the faith. Footsteps of faith. You know, in order for us to, to walk this journey that God has for us, it requires for us to take some footsteps of faith. You know, it says, you know, what we had talked about last week, success is the is, is success results in daily habits and routines and rhythms. It's not just in the once in a lifetime transformation. God works in a process. God, God works in steps, church. And there's times when God will will do something amazing. There's times when the breakthrough will come, the, the miracle will happen, and that does happen. But what we talk about is, is that those, the steps of the faithful, those that have a rhythm and a process that they're in, God, the suddenlies of God show up more often to those that are in a process than those that aren't. So if you want to see the suddenlies of God and the, the miracles of God, most of the time it happens because you're in a routine, you're in a process, and in the midst of that process, God just shows up. And the suddenness of God begin to be more evident and as you track that. And it says in Psalm 17, 5, My steps have held to your path. My feet have not stumbled. And Psalms 37 talks about when the Lord delights in your ways, He makes your steps firm. And though you stumble and fall, the Lord upholds you with His hand. See the steps of the faithful. God, as you're walking these steps, God is with you. God is for you. And He has steps that He wants you to take. And we also see in that in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 7, there's another step here. It talks about this. And this kind of goes in line with Joshua. In, in Deuteronomy 2, 7, it says, The Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He has watched over your journey. Just think, God watches over the steps of your journey, church. And through this, and even through the vast desert, and in these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you, and you have not lacked anything. As we take these steps, God promises, look, I'm with you. And as you're going through these things, even if you're going through the desert, we're going to talk about that. Like how, one of the questions we're going to ask today is, how do you get out of the desert? I mean, how do you get out of the wilderness? Well, there's some steps that you could take to do that, and the Bible also says the steps of the righteous are ordered of God. So today, how do you face something new? That's, what, that's what's happening here. Moses just died, um, and now Joshua is in charge of taking God's people out of Egypt. Well, Moses took them out of Egypt. Now they're in the wilderness. Jo Joshua's job is to take them out of the desert and the wilderness into the promised land. So how do you leave? How do you leave the wilderness? How do you leave, a sea how do you leave 40 years of just wandering in the desert. And so many, maybe some of you today have walked through the cycles. Maybe you're in a cycle that you can't break free from. Maybe you're in a cycle of addiction. Or maybe you're, you're just in this wilderness season where you seem like, man, it seems like I just can't get out of it. Well, there's some steps that you could take today to get out of that cycle or out of that wilderness. Maybe, maybe you're facing something new today. Th this, these steps is when you're facing something new, a, a new beginning, a new season. You know, that's what's happening for God's people. They're, they're leaving behind the old way of life, and now they're getting ready to step into something totally new. How do you step into the new? How do you do that? How do you, how do you do that? How do you get free from the wilderness? How do you step into the new? How do we, uh, how do we enter into the place that God has for us? The promised land was what God was speaking of going all the way back to Abraham. God had this plan and this purpose for his people. And now Joshua has the task of leading a whole nation into the new thing that God has, the, the promise that God has. For. How do you step in to the promises of God into these new things? Well, Joshua chapter 3 gives us a whole, gives us some steps that we could take today. And it 
we're going to talk about these footsteps of faith. If you got your Bibles, look at, uh, look at verse 1 of, of Joshua chapter 3. It says here, Joshua 3, verse 1, it says, Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing the river. The first step of the first faithful step they took is they got up early. So how, why is that significant? Well, let me, let, me ex, let me just explain why this is significant. This is a footstep of faith is to get up early, but it has, look, look at what it means. First of all, when you read in Scripture, Jesus, Joshua, Moses, a lot of the great men and women of God, it says in Scripture, even David wrote Psalms about this, that, that morning was the typical discipline that they would use to wait on God. It was the first thing they did. You know, David would get up early in the morning, and, and, and the first thing David did was to wait on God. He got up early and waited on God. That's a discipline. So we see that in Scripture. That it, and then even church history, the, some of the great men and women of God, you get up early. It's, it's a habit. It's a, it's a discipline. It's, it's, it's one of the most important steps is, is to put God first of your day. That the first thing we, you do before you set out on your day is, is that we're going to give time for God. And so we're going to get up early. It's that morning is that typical discipline. Also, Jeremiah says, why do you want to get up early? Jeremiah, Lamentation says, his mercies are new every morning, church. It's like every day is a new day. Every day is a new beginning. And, and when we get up early, we get to take the first bite of God's mercies. Like, like, you know what? You had a bad day yesterday. The good news is tomorrow there's a new day coming. And guess what? When you get up early, his mercies are new, church. His grace is there for you. His forgiveness is there for you. His mercies are new each morning. And Malachi 4 says the sun of righteousness rises up with healing in its wings. And, and what happens in the morning is that the sun rises. And, and Malachi is talking about Jesus is the sun, the S-U-N. He's the sun of righteousness that rises. And you know what? Every morning when I, we have a window up by, uh, in, our, in our kitchen and I get, I get to see the sunrise in the morning. And there's just something about that. And I just picture, like, not only is God's mercies new every day, there's healing. There's a new healing. There's a healing. There, there, there's a resurrection that comes each day. And you get to take, the, you get to take part in that. But it even goes deeper. If you go back to Joshua chapter 1, why did Joshua have to get up early? It goes all the way back here. Joshua chapter 1 is Joshua is now leading Israel, and Joshua gets a word from the Lord. And he, you know, it says here in Joshua chapter 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon, from the great river to the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers gave them. Be strong, be very courageous, be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Don't be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. See, jo when Joshua would get up early, God would talk to him. God would visit him. And this is one of the times when God visited Joshua. God, God gave Joshua the word of the Lord. And he got that when he got up early. And he says, don't let, the, don't let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, meaning get up early. Meditate on the word of God in the morning. Meditate on the word of God at night. And meditate on it in between during the day. Joshua got a word of the Lord as he was disciplined and getting up early. You, you also notice of Joshua, when Moses was alive, Moses would get up and go to the tent of meeting to seek God. But the Bible says when Moses left, Joshua lingered. See, Joshua loved the presence. Joshua stayed. He, he would follow Moses to the tent of meeting. When Moses got done seeking God, Joshua was just hanging out, getting, he's getting the leftovers. 
And, and that's how Joshua was trained. And Joshua would seek the Lord and God would talk to him and visit him. And that's why he got up early. He, he got a word from God. But not only did he get a word from God, in Joshua chapter 2, 10 and 11, Joshua needs to test the word. After Joshua gets this word, he has to say, after he got it, he ordered the officers of the people. He said, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Because three days from now, you're going to cross the Jordan here to go in to take possession of the land the Lord your God has given you. And then Joshua sent in some spies. Joshua ordered a couple spies, and he sent in two spies. And, and, and rabbinic tradition says, you want to know who one of, the spy, one of the two spies were that Joshua sent in? He sent in his old buddy. Caleb was one of the two spies that Joshua sent to get a check on the land. Why? Because Joshua and Caleb were also sent as spies under Moses' leadership. And you know the story. Joshua and Caleb saw what God saw of the land. The sad reality is, is that if Moses would have listened to Joshua and Caleb, they could have avoided a whole lot of pain in the wilderness. So Joshua sends Caleb and another guy. See, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua, the Bible says Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. And Caleb was somebody that Joshua could trust. And Joshua says, all right, I got a word from God. Now I need to know if this word is going to stand. Say, The Bible says let every word be established by two or three witnesses. So Joshua is just like, what? He has to make sure, is this a legit word from God? So he sends two spies because he needs what? He needs a witness that confirms the word that God gave him. And what happened is, is they come back and in, they, they're in there in, verse, in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 10 says, They heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea, for you came out of Egypt, and, and what you did to Shion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites, east of Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted, and everyone's courage failed because of you, for the Lord your God in heaven above and on earth below. So Rahab is saying, look, what, what Rahab's getting the pulse of the community. He says, look, guys, my people are afraid of you. <laughs> so Caleb's taking note of this. Caleb, Caleb, I'm sure Joshua said, look, I got a word from God. I need you guys to check it out. And, so, and then when Caleb comes back and the other guy comes back, it says, when the two men started back, they went down out of the hills, forded the river, came to Joshua, son of Nun, told him everything that had happened to them. And they said to Joshua, the Lord has surely given the land into your hands. All the people are melting in fear because of it. See, Joshua got up early. He sought the word of the Lord, got the word of the Lord, sent out a couple of spies, said, look, I need some confirmation. I need to know if we're going to do this. I need to know if, if what God is saying to me is true. The spies come back, gives them the report of the Lord, and then we see that, that preparation time is coming. It says in Joshua chapter 3 here that, hey, early the next morning, Joshua, they're getting ready. They're getting ready to sit out. They're camping. Joshua is reminding people, look, get, get the, make preparations, get everything ready to go. See, the early time of the day was where Joshua got the word of the Lord, but it's the, it's the first part of the, of the day where Joshua was just preparing. He, he needed the confirmation that he needed, but he needed to prepare. That's why he got up early. He did all that. That's why getting up early is significant. That's why we got to put God first. It's like, like Joshua's like, look, I got the word of the Lord and now I got to prepare myself. And now, now we, have to, we, have to take, we have to take the next step. Is once you get up early to take that step, now the next step is in Joshua 3, 5, consecrate yourself. So we're going to get up early, but the next thing they had to do was consecrate themselves. What does that mean? It, it means that it says here in Joshua 3, 5, it's we consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. That word consecration means to set yourself apart. It's a, it's a term used for cleansing. It's, it's used for changing of the clothes. It's, it's, it's a type of worship. It's a, it's a ceremony. It's a ritual. But, but consecration means, okay, we're, we're, we got the word of the Lord, but now we have to prepare ourselves. It's kind of like a prophetic act. Like they're, they're getting themselves ready. They're, they're changing their clothes. It's like a picture of, 
I got some things inside my life that I got to deal with. It's a form of repentance. And another type of consecration you'll see later before they go to Jericho is they needed to, circ- some people needed to be circumcised. Like there was some thing, it's a, it's a picture of Paul says circumcised to heart. Like there's some things in us that God wants to take out of our life so that it won't hinder the promise and the word from coming to pass. So Joshua would say, look, before, before we set out on this journey, there's some things you got to take care of in your heart, and your mind. you you, you got to get yourself committed. You, you know, see, sometimes you need a fresh commitment and a reset and a restart. That's what Joshua was doing. He said, look, guys, I know we just came out of the wilderness. Now we have to get ready for this next step, and it's going to require something different than before. So let's, let's prepare our hearts. Let's deal with some things. Let's, if we have to repent of some things, if we have to get right with some things, if we have to... You know, maybe we have to change something in our life. The changing of clothes is a picture of maybe there's an attitude that needs to be changed. Maybe there's something. Something has to be left behind in order for you to go across into the Jordan. So that's what it means to consecrate yourself. It also means that part of consecration is is there's an anointing. They're, They're trying to get ready and prepared for what God has for the next season. Repentance is a part of that. Um... And also, too, when God says you're going to be able to do great and amazing things, what that means is is it means that when you do these steps, God's going to go before you. Miracles are going to happen. Breakthroughs are going to happen. But also, in the Hebrew meaning of amazing things or wonderful things, one of the meanings of that Hebrew word is, is you get to overcome the difficult. Isn't that amazing? That that when you consecrate yourself, you're, you're preparing to take on difficult things. You're, God's preparing you to take on a greater burden. God is preparing you for something greater, and he's going to do something wonderful, but part of the wonderful thing that God's going to do is he's, as you consecrate yourself, God promises, look, you're going to overcome, and you're going to be able to handle some difficult things ahead. Come on, somebody. God loves you enough to prepare you to handle the difficult things that he has in store for you. And that part, and only way, the only way you're going to handle the greater is consecration, is, is making yourself ready, getting yourself to a place where, God, I'm ready for this challenge. And, and you see, over and over, God was reminding Joshua, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. Why, why did God have to remind Joshua of that? It's because maybe there was some fear that Joshua had too, like, the fear of Moses was a great leader, and who am I? Who am I in to, to step into those big shoes? And it's almost like God is saying, look, Joshua, you don't have to step into Moses' shoes. You just got to step in your own and be confident in your own shoes because I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to guide you. And so, but God is promising, look, I'm going to prepare you for the difficult. I'm going to prepare you to do these things. And when you follow me, you're, you're going to see me. You're going to see victories. You're going to see things change. You're going to see lives change, cities conquered. It's like God is reminding them, I got all these amazing and wonderful things that you do not know yet, but consecration is what prepares us to handle the difficult assignments that God is praying, preparing for us. So these footsteps of faith means I'm going to get up early. I'm going to consecrate myself. Then in verse, in verse 2 and 4, then we're going to follow the ark. We're going to get up early. We're going to consecrate ourselves. But guess what? We're going to follow the ark. What does that mean? It's the presence of God. The ark of the covenant is a picture of God's presence. It's, it's God, you know, the ark would always go out in front of the people. And, and when Moses was alive, the presence of God was a cloud, a physical cloud by day. It was a fire at night. And whenever the cloud was moving, they would move. Whenever the fire was moving, they would move. Whenever the, the priests would carry the ark, when they would go out in front of God's people, it's a picture of we're putting God before the problem. We're putting God before this. God is in front of us. And, the, and Psalms 23 says he's what? He's our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. God is out in front of us. God is going before us. And guess what? Our job is to follow the ark. We're going to get up early, consecrate ourselves. We're going to follow the ark. We see that in verse, in, look at it here in verses 2 and 4. It says, When you see the ark of the covenant of your God and the priests, the Levites who are carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go. 
See, if we're going to know where we're going to go in the next season, we've got we to gotta follow the ark. We've got to follow the presence. And that's what Josh will say. Look, you're going to know where to go when you follow the ark. Because when God's out in front of you, he's going to show you places that you haven't been before. And, and that's why they had to follow the ark. And, and then it says this, but keep a distance between a thousand yards between you and the ark and do not go near it. When we follow the ark, we're basically putting the presence of God before the problem. God's people back then had a presence first mindset. Like, God is first, and then we're going to follow. They always put the presence of God before the problem. And, and when you read in Scripture, when, when people tried to do their thing instead of God's thing, it never ended right. So, but, but our job is to follow the ark. Our job is to follow the leading of the Lord. And that's what the picture of the priests carrying the ark represents, is that the priests carried the ark. God is going in front of us, and we're going to follow behind it. We're going to be led by God. And, and why, why did they put these specific things of you have to follow so many cubits behind? It's, it's because the, the illustration there is this, is God doesn't want you to get too far behind and God doesn't want you to get too far ahead. God wants you to stay in a, in a rhythm with him. He's going to lead. He is the shepherd. And you don't want to get too far behind him and, and you don't want to jump him. Because he's the one who knows where you need to go. So if you get out, if you get ahead of God, you're gonna, you may, you may end up going the wrong way. But if you stay within a distance, part of it's honor and reverence that that we also know in the Bible that if you got too close to the ark, and, and also it's a picture of you can't be careless with the presence of God. So many people act carelessly with the presence, and 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 this this this, this little command is simply say, look, we're gonna we're gonna stay in a rhythm. We're not going to get too far behind. We're not going to get too far ahead. We're going to follow, and we're going to maintain a distance of reverence and honor because, because some people tried to touch the ark, and they died. It's just a reverence thing that God is holy and reverent, and, and we, don't want to be, we don't want to get too careless around the presence of God. So that's why they had that there. and They're following the ark, and, and we see this in the New Testament. Galatians 5.16 says, We walk by the Spirit. That's what this is a picture of. We, we follow the ark because we're, we're walking by the Spirit. Galatians 5.25, we live by the Spirit, so let's keep in step with the Spirit. That's what this is a picture of. So we're getting up early. We're consecrating ourselves. We're following the ark. What do we do? Finally, you got to stand in the river. There comes a point when you could get up early and you could consecrate, you, you could follow God's presence, but there comes a point when God leads you to the river's edge and God's presence is going to go through the river. It was that flood stage. It was almost like, how are we going to get across the river? It's that flood stage. It's that harvest season. How are we going to get it across? Well, this, this, you have to step into the river. It, it's a risk. You, at some point, you, you got you to you step in. And that's what they did. That's, that's how you, that's what footsteps of faith means. That's how we get out of a wilderness season. That's how we break a cycle. That's how we face something new is, is we get up early, we consecrate ourselves. We're going to follow God's presence. But when we get to that place where we must make a step of obedience, we've got to step in the river. Just like God's people had to a, had a step into the Red Sea. Come on, somebody. you want to get delivered, you've got to get through that Red Sea. You just can't, you just can't stand on the edge in order to get your deliverance, you got to step into the Red Sea. Now God is saying, you want to get to the promised land? you got to stand in the river. we got to get into the river. What is that a picture of? Again, the ark is a picture of God's presence leading us, but standing in a river is a picture of, of being immersed in the presence of God. It's a picture of baptism. It's, it's a picture of God's presence. It's a picture of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's, it's, a, it's a picture of, a, of an obedient step, and it's, it's an important step. You know, John the Baptist was, was baptizing people in the Jordan River, and Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. And it's a picture of new beginnings. It's a picture of, of you know what, the old. Now finally the old is going to be gone and the new is going to come. And, and if you want to step into the new that God has, we got to get into the river and, and we got to stand in the river. And we got to let God's presence touch us. And also I'm reminded of Naaman. You know, Naaman had to go wash himself in the river and he got healed in the river. It's 
this standing in the river, it's like, it, it's an obedient step of faith, but it's a risky one because it, the river is at flood stage. It, it's, it's kind of like, okay, what do we do? And, but yet there is a testimony that they have in the past of, okay, I remember when Moses, you know, he had the staff and he raised up his hands and the, the Red Sea part of we walked. So, so there is a testimony they have of, okay, well, maybe if the priests are out in front of us, just maybe will God part well, God parted for us too. That's exactly what he did. But they had, a step, they had a step into the river. In order to see God work, and in order to see God move church, they had to physically step into the river. They, God, they, God didn't say, look, come to the river and stand and watch God do it. No, it was in their step of obedience that God did his part. And that's the risk. That's the obedience. That's the faithful step that we need to take. And it and John's baptism pictures repentance and cleansing. Jesus' baptism is a, is a baptism of power. It's like the, the heavens opened, the Father's voice spoke, and the Holy Spirit came down and rested and remained on Jesus. And Naaman washed in the river and got healed. And, but we also see in, in, in Joshua 4.10, there's an interesting commandment here. And Joshua 4, 10, it says, Now the priests who carried the ark remained standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything the Lord had commanded Joshua was done by the people, just as Moses had directed Joshua. We're going to stand in the river, but we need to stand in the river even if it's uncomfortable. Is that they were told to stand in the river until God finished the work that was commanded. Are you willing to stand in the river? Are you willing to get into a place with God? Are you willing to stand and remain in God's presence until the full work of healing is done, the full work of transformation is done, the full work that God wants to do in you and through you? Are you willing to stand? And no, no matter, you know what, it, it's uncomfortable. It, it's like, it's an uncomfortable thing, but yet when we stand in that place where God has us, that's when miracles happen. That God wants to do a full and complete work in your life, and it requires us to, to stand in the river and let, let the fullness of God's presence immerse us. And then we see, we see the complete deliverance in, in, in Joshua 4, 50 through 18. It, it talked about that once, that once they stood there and they, they did what was commanded, then, then they were commanded to come up and out. They were commanded to come up and out of the Jordan. And that's a picture of this. It's a picture of God taking his people out, and bringing freedom, bringing healing, bringing deliverance. It's a, it's a picture of the power of God moving. And, and what God did in the past, he did again. He, he parted the water so they could cross it into the promised land. And it's a picture of, of, of God's power. We, we see that in Psalm 66. Psalm 66 gives us a little snippet. It says in Psalm 66, verse 6, he, he said, He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in Him. It's like God, God is doing something new, and He's doing something new for His people, and it's because they were willing to stand and remain in the river. And once, they, once the work was completed, God says, now it's time to come out of the river and come into that new place that I have. Caleb, could you come up and we're going to close service out. And as you stand in the river and remain in the river and let God do a work in your life, and when you come up and out of the river, Joshua 5 verse 1 says this, now when all the almighty kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until we had crossed over, their hearts melted and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. What happened was is as, as God's people obeyed these steps, there was a testimony on them that God released to the enemy, saying, look, the, these are people that are walking in power. These are people that are walking with God. These are people that the presence of God has gone out in front of them, and they've obeyed. They, they're staying in the presence. These are, these are people that are trusting God completely. And God went before them and created a testimony that says, look, these are people that you got to be careful of. 
And, and, and Rahab confirmed that too when the spies came back, that people were melting in fear because of God's people, because of what God has done. That's why we got to stand in the river. We, we want to stand in the river and, and, and stand there as long as it takes for God to do a work in us so that when we come out of the river, the world, the world recognizes that we are different. The world recognizes that there's a power that rests on our life and there's a grace that rests on our life. There's a, and then finally, there's a testimony that rests on your life. You see, when they completed these steps, the footsteps of faith are ordered by God so you could cross over into the new God has planned for you. The best step, the best step is a step of faith to trust Jesus today. And that's what God wants us to do. And these steps are also for someone who's new to the faith because we, we need to trust Jesus. And that's what this, this, these steps are. It's all about coming back and trusting Jesus again. And, and for those of us that have followed him, we have to realize that these steps, they were ordered by God for Joshua. And, and the key to this, the key to, to the disciplines of being faithful, the key to, to this step series is this, is that, is that God speaks to people differently. And, and how God spoke to David in his situation, God spoke differently to Joshua. And these are steps, and we know that these steps came from what? They came from Joshua spending time with God, and God spoke to him. Look, Joshua, I want you to get up. I want you to consecrate yourself. I want you to follow the ark, and I want you to step into the river. That's what God commanded Joshua to do. It gives us a blueprint for us that, that God, in this series, I'm believing God's going to reveal the steps that you need to take in 2023. All of us are called differently and have a unique set of gifts and abilities. And, and there are certain steps that, that God may have for me that are going to be different from you. So the whole, the whole key to this series is, is, is learning from these people in Bible, learning about the routines and rhythms they had with God so that we could hear from God to see, okay, what steps does God have me to take? And, and then they may look similar to the ones that we're studying too. And, but remember this, is that God spoke to Joshua to take the steps and the people obeyed Joshua in the commands of the Lord. So do I, the, the rhythm is, is God speaks and we obey. We, God speaks, we obey. God speaks, we obey. And that's what God's people did. And, and of course, God was speaking through Joshua and then Joshua relayed what God said and the people obeyed and they were blessed. So that's how these steps work. We hear God and obey God. And, and finally, when you're on this, when you take footsteps of faith, don't forget to pick up a stone along the journey. Don't, don't forget to stop. It, that's what happened. As they, were, as they were standing in the river, Joshua told them to get, pick up some stones. Why? Because when you're on a journey of faith, the stone is a, is a testimony. Joshua said, look, pick up some stones and, and we're gonna, I want you to take these stones with you. So, so when you're on a journey of faith, don't forget to pick up a stone along the journey. Why? Because God wants you to remember some things. We see that in Joshua 4, verses 4 through 7. It says here that, what do these stones mean? Joshua says, tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And then it says later at the end of chapter 4, it says, in the future, when your descendants ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Tell, tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Don't forget to pick up a stone on the journey. It's your testimony. Joshua said, I want you to pick up a stone. I want you to carry the stone. And then when you cross, I want you to set it down. That's, our, that's how we use our testimony. We pick it up, we carry it. And sometimes we have to set down our testimony. And, and then Peter writes 
In one, of his, in one of his letters later in the New Testament, Peter says, we're all a standing stone. We're all a memorial stone. See, the stones that, that, that Joshua had these people pick up, Peter is saying, as believers in Christ, all of us are a standing stone. And what does that mean? It means when people look at your life, they got to ask the question, what happened here? What happened here? See, our life is a story. We have a testimony to share. And, and when we take our testimony and when we carry it to where God wants us to carry it, and then there's times when God says, I want you to plant it. I want you to put that testimony down. Why? It speaks of what did God do here? He saved me. He set me free. It's your story. We're all a standing stone that represents what God has done. And, and we are to take the testimony and carry it. And at times we are to put that testimony down and people, your kids should someday when you have kids or grandkids, your kids should say, what did God do in your life? I mean, that's, that's, what it, that's the message of the standing stone is what has God done for you? And how has God helped you? And see, we're all a standing stone that we take, we carry, we put it down. And there's times people, see, the world is looking for Christians that could be a standing stone of them where they can say, hey, what had God done in your life? How did you get healed? Or how did you get set free? How come you don't drink anymore? How come you don't smoke anymore? How come you don't do drugs anymore? How come you don't do this? How did you get out of debt? I mean, there's the testimonies are endless, but the world wants to look at your life and they want to ask the question, what do these stones mean? What, what does it mean to follow God? What, is, what does it mean to be faithful? Well, we have the answer, church. And that's what Joshua wanted. He wanted them not to forget. Guys, when you're on the footsteps of faith, pick up a stone. And, and when we get to the other side, we're, we're going to build a memorial. We're, we're, not gonna, we're gonna remember what God did because someday our kids and our grandkids are gonna ask the question, what do these stones mean? And that that standing stone, it, it's, a, it's a reminder to them, oh, let me tell you what God did here. And then also Joshua said, before the, before the water covered up the stones, Joshua built another memorial in the river that was hidden. So it's like, not only is there a visible standing stone to, to thank God that he built a memorial before the river came back to flood stage. And, and so another thing that, that these guys would say is, look, in this river, there's another memorial somewhere. And it's another opportunity for them to tell the story of God. And God is just so good in what he does in us and through us. And he has footsteps of faith lined up for you in this season. But today, remember, he wants you to get up early. He wants you to consecrate yourself. He wants you to follow his presence. And he wants you to stand in the river. And, and when you're on the journey of faith, man, don't, don't forget to pick up a stone. Don't forget to have a remembrance stone. Don't forget what God is doing in your life. Sometimes we can, we can get caught up into the steps of the journey that we forget to enjoy the journey. That's what Joshua was saying. Look, guys, this journey is hard, so let's... Don't forget what God has done. This is going to be your worship. This is going to be your testimony. This is going to be something that you're going to be able to tear, share from generation to generation. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for this time that we got to be together today. Father, just thank you for reminding us of these steps. Now, Lord, help us to follow the steps that you have for us this week. And, Use this testimony, use this word to challenge us to take those steps that we need. And Lord, forgive us, God, if, if we haven't put your presence before the problem. Father, forgive us if we haven't followed the ark when we should. Forgive us, Lord, that if we haven't taken that step. And Lord, give us the, like Joshua, help us to be strong and courageous in this season so that we can step into the river, so that we can make that step of obedience, Lord. And Father, help us, to, help us not to be afraid to step into the fullness of your presence. Give us the faith to stand in that river, Lord, and help us to remain there until you finish the work of transformation in our hearts and lives. And Father, for those of us that have been around for a while, Lord, remind us, thank you for reminding us we have a story to share, a testimony that we are a standing stone, and help us to be a, a person 
in the community where people go say, wow, what happened there? Lord, may your presence, Lord, may there be a testimony that goes out in front of us that says, wow, look at the God they serve. And, and Father, we know that, that you went ahead of them and you, you prepared things for them and steps for them. You, you prepared the their enemies. You prepared the towns that they were supposed to conquer and take. Lord, you said that everywhere they would put their foot, they would have land. And Lord, you, you made it you made it possible for them to take those steps of faith. And Father, what you did for them, do for us in this season. Father, open up the doors that we need to take in this season. Give us favor with our enemies. And give us favor with those that are coming against us. Give us favor. And, and God... Lord, we don't want people to be afraid of us just to be afraid of us, but Lord, we want people to, we want people to have a reverence and honor for God. That when we step into a place, that, that people know that God has showed up. And Father, we want, we want to be people of faith wherever we go. There's, there's a presence that goes before us. They're, they're, you're going before us. And, and Lord, whether it's in the workplace, in the neighborhood, wherever we go, God, may your presence go before us and that when we step into that place, May the people around us know that, that we've been with Jesus, that we've had a connection with God. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for those that need to take a step of faith. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to challenge you. Maybe, maybe this message, like the first thing you need to hear is that, man, I need to take a step of faith in my walk with God. And I want to challenge you that, that the most important step to take in this series is, is, is a step of faith of trusting in Jesus. And I want to encourage you that, that if you've, for whatever reason, you've stepped away from the Lord, you could always step back and he's waiting for you to step back. So I want to challenge you today that in this series, this is a, this is a personal invitation to step back into relationship and to step back in a place with God. And if that's you, I'm always available to talk with you about that, pray with you about that. But all you could do this morning is, is you could say something like, Dear Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Save me. Dear Jesus, I know I've stepped away from you, but Jesus, I'm here, I'm here to step back into faith with you again. I want to step back into relationship with you again and help me to step into that. So Father, I pray for those that are stepping back today. I pray for those that maybe have stepped away, but now they're stepping back. God, I pray that you be with them. God, I pray that you help them and heal them. And Lord, just, 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 Restore their relationship back with you today in Jesus' name. And if you want to make that step of faith back today, I'd love to pray, pray and talk with you after service. And if you need prayer or anything today too, before, I mean, we have a, a lunch that's available for everybody to stay. We do that once a month of fellowship. So open invitation for everybody to eat with us today. But Caleb's going to play a little bit if you want to stay and linger in the presence and you want to meditate on some things. But I'm available to pray with you as well. If you need prayer for healing or you need an encouraging word or something, I want to, I'm here to pray with you today to, to help you make those steps that God wants to take in your life. And thank you for the online family that's with us today. Blessings for those that are watching later and now. And you can put our offering slide back up for those that popped on and for the message today. Just a reminder that you could give to the ministry for we have offering boxes outside the, the doors as well as you. There's online options for you to give as well. So thanks for joining us today and blessings to you. Take care and God bless.